probably right. The, um, the standards of our the standards of our group are not at the level that they need to be. Because if we were training unbelievably well, I think that would be reflected in winning games of football on a weekend. And so, it doesn't surprise me one little one little bit that. Um, that someone would come and observe your training and say, oh, I don't think the, the, the standards are good enough because that's why we're sitting in the position on the ladder that we are right now. That was released today, actually. Uh, Alistair Clarkson and, uh, and Todd, Viney. Todd Viney speaking to the North Melbourne members, Ed, around uh, what Mick McGowan had to say in the Herald Sun, that the North Melbourne training standards are not are the worst in the competition. And uh, there's the coach there, not barking back or fighting back. He's just saying, yep, this is the reality of the situation. And where it's disappointing, I think, is I went and watched them a number of times last year and they will by far and away... Um, the, the, yeah, the, the poorest trainers in really? a sense, but more so that they were still going through walkthroughs on how Alistair wanted them to play. So you take it for what it is that this is a club trying to learn. Well, Collingwood have been the best kicking side I ever saw train last year. You've got a side in North Melbourne last year trying to learn how to play. But fast forward 12 months on, they are still in the same situation, which is um, yeah, quite dire. And you can see the pressure and strain they are under. But they're not fighting. Mm. Uh, they are probably realising the, the situation. That's where they're at. It's unusual, isn't it, for mm. Clarko to yeah. concede something so drastically critical of, of him and his football club. But, you know, you've got to get to the realism. And that's what we were trying to do in, in our discussion on our podcast the other day. I was talking to a club today, a senior club and a senior club official, who had said that he had spoken to the AFL last week saying, what are we going to do about North? Because at the moment, it's skewing the competition. If you play North, you get two wins and a massive percentage, basically three wins, which is actually tipping it. But more importantly, and this person spoke to me in regards to what we spoke about, which we'll talk about in a second, Jimmy, is where, where does North go to now? Because they're, they're out of Tassie. You know, I, I believe actually North should come out of Tassie now. Um, and we, we need to actually build up the momentum of Tasmania for the sake of the Tasmanian situation. But also, uh, people have misconstrued what I've said. I'm not talking about getting rid of North Melbourne, quite the opposite. I actually want to cement them into the competition and go to the north of Melbourne and play a role similar to what uh, GWS are doing up in Sydney or Gold Coast are doing in Gold Coast, and that is be the vanguard into a whole new world of population in the north of Melbourne. Now, this is the old... This was almost their old recruiting zone. I, I grew up in their recruiting zone out in Broadmeadows. But look at the growth. Calcalo, which used to be a hotel and a pit stop for the trucks going up the Hume Highway, has now got 18,000 coming in 2041, but nearly 10,000 out of growth rate of 111%. You can read the stats there in the story that uh, Mark Robinson wrote on the weekend. Um, Jimmy, the, the reason why we're saying this is... We want North Melbourne to, to not only survive, but to thrive. Mm. And you have a look, they're going to lose Spirit of Tasmania as a major sponsor at some stage. Now, look, off the top of my head, CSL is now the biggest company in Australia. They're domiciled in Broadmeadows, in Camp Road. You've got the Melbourne Airport, which is one of the biggest um, airports and, and businesses, with the backing of Macquarie Bank. You know, it's about time these kicked in to the local area. And if North get out there and grab hold of this, you know, got the market, new market out in Eltham. There's businesses everywhere in that growth corridor and a migration situation with some 400, 500,000 people coming in and a lot coming to Melbourne in the next period of time. Now, none of these people have actually could draw a football, just like my family couldn't draw a football when they arrived in Broadmeadows. My point is, you, you, if you get out there, just about every kid out there can get onto your academy or what do we call it now? The... Next generation. Next generation. Next generation. Yeah. They all qualify for two generations because they've been born overseas or they're the first generation. But not only that, that's where you recruit people who want to actually become part of the society. Get them on buses, get them to the MCG. Now, they, you can't get them in for Collingwood Carlton this week, but you get them in every other game at North. And I just mm. think there's a really great opportunity. Talking about recruiting, Ed, I've got an idea too that uh, I'm keen to get your views on. I haven't spoken to you, Lordy, about it. You actually have an association with this uh, this man I've raised here in uh, Scott Pendlebury, who I just threw out yesterday on afl.com.au as, as someone North should target. And I say that for a number of reasons, primarily... The, the instant attraction that he would bring to a club that he went to, in this case North Melbourne, would be profound when it came to other players of significant talent and ability who are also looking for a new home. So that fixes itself up instantly. And more importantly, on ground, if he was to get his 37-year-old body, which will, will be next year, through one more season of footy, maybe two if it works out, but the effect he would have on a Sheasel and a Wardlaw and a McKercher and a Dersma and even a Larky, who's an experienced player, but the help that that would... But can I ask you, what does he have to gain out of it? Well, that's up to him. 
him, isn't it? If he wants to keep playing and if Collingwood don't want him, he's got a decision if, to make. If he, it? if he wants to coach, uh, eventually be a senior coach, that would round, round him out because you get to see the biggest club and you get to see a club that's young yeah. and developing. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. What does he get? Uh, you round, you finish his career in black and white, all that sort of stuff. But it's another element to add to his development. I, I think he'll have eight to ten clubs. Mm. Uh, that's, a, that's a challenge North's going to have. I, I think they will be queuing up for him. Uh, and they will bend over to do whatever he wants them to do to get him in that club. And potentially, Damo, I think it'll be on for young and old that much that could we see where there's a wink, wink, nod, nod that you will be our next senior coach. To play for the one year? Or, or even whatever Scott wants to it, do. Because it came to him in 2022, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, when he, it when he was out of contract at Collingwood and, and he ended up signing for 2022 and 2023. Three. Sorry, and that went into 2024 yeah. this year. So, but he's out now. Three if, before the Collingwood up. fans mm. f- jump out the window, just um, I, I know Scott pretty well on this. He wants to finish in black and white stripes. Mm. The only caveat that I put is if he thinks he had another year left and Collingwood decided no, mm. then he might do that with that in mind. I think your thesis is right. I just don't think it'll be Scott Pendlebury. There is, there is too much downside in Scott Pendlebury finishing his career for one year, even if he's about coaching. To me, it never for, changes for legacy. It, it never no, changes a player's it, legacy. It doesn't, but... Didn't change Luke Hodge. Yeah, but... This, didn't change Dougie Hawkins, in my eyes. Yeah, I know, but you know what? I think it did. And because uh, I sat on the footy show with him when he did it, and it was, that was, it was a fine didn't, fact. Didn't change Sam Mitchell. No, but I think, I think Scott Pendlebury at Collingwood is... is and I'm no mm. diss on the, on the other clubs or anything... Is that that's not a that wouldn't be a good marketing ploy? It would. I think it would tarnish his. No, it wouldn't tarnish his reputation. It just wouldn't enhance it. I think he finishes where he finishes, unless there's a blue at the end of the year and he goes, you know, I reckon I can get another year. He'll go. But I think all things being equal, Scott Pendlebury finishes at Collingwood. Then he can look at his coaching career after that. Mm. But I think what you're saying is right. If it's not him, somebody else. Yeah, Callan Ward and Travis Boak were the other two names that I thought are of that calibre who could mm. actually have that similar effect. There's only one Scott Pendlebury though.